Hey everybody, I wanted to do a brief video over this chem activity H, valence bond theory, and uh, work through a couple of examples to try to illustrate this, um, illustrate these concepts. And this is all about your hybrid orbitals and um, formation of bonds between different atoms and what constitutes like a sigma bond and a pi bond and everything like that. So let's go ahead and get started. So what we're presented with initially is the valence bond theory. And this theory is that electrons are localized in orbitals associated with each atom, okay? Now, atomic orbitals on adjacent atoms can interact uh, to form a bond through the overlap of two orbitals, okay? So one of the things that's very important about this is that these orbitals have to basically be the same. So what that means is that if we think about a hydrogen atom, a hydrogen atom looks a little bit like this. Well, there's an H, sorry. A hydrogen atom has an electron configuration of 1s1. So there's one electron in that 1s orbital. Now, what that means is that this one electron is glad to basically bind or form a bond with another s orbital. So what it needs is a complementary s orbital that it can jump within. So if we think about a molecule like H2, that looks like this, H, H, okay? Each of these hydrogens have the exact same electron configuration. This hydrogen right here that I'm gonna put a little star by, that is going to bring a 1s electron, as is this hydrogen right here. And so when we think about what this looks like, it's gonna look a little bit like this. So our s orbitals can overlap and those electrons can be shared, hence we're forming a bond between them. Now it gets a little bit trickier as we move on. So when we're using more complicated uh, molecules, or I'm sorry, when we're looking at bonding of more complicated molecules and we have a little bit more complicated of a scheme with respect to where the electrons are going to be found. So when we look at another molecule, CH4 for instance, well, what do we have? What we need to do is first remember our electron configuration for carbon, carbon, carbon. It is 1s2, 2s2, and 2p2. Okay. Now the valence electrons for carbon are these guys right here. We have a carbon-hydrogen bond that is forming. Now what we need to do is we need to, well, figure out how that can actually take place. So we know that hydrogen has a single electron in an s orbital. So I'm going to draw that like this. Carbon has, well, it's got two electrons in the 2s orbital and two electrons in the 2p orbital. Now, what our electron configuration, our orbital diagram for carbon, or yeah, what carbon looks like is as follows. We've got, this is our 2s orbital. And then this right here is our 2p orbital. Let's go ahead and fill those in with electrons. One up, one down, then up, up. Okay, so when we look at carbon in its orbital diagram, our what we have is we've got one and two spots with, well, unshared electrons, okay? But neither of those look like an S orbital. So what we need to do is we need to hybridize. So what, I don't know why I did that. We need to hybridize orbitals. So what we are going to do is we are going to come up with a orbital that is a combination of a 2s orbital plus, well, our 2p orbitals. And we're going to be combining it with our 2px, py, pz. So rather than having an orbital diagram that looks like this right here, 
it's going to look like this right here. Now, what does this orbital consist of? It's a hybrid orbital consisting of 1s and 3p orbitals. So this is known as an sp3 hybrid orbital. Okay. Now, what does that actually look like? Well, we know it's an s orbital has a spherical shape to it, and a p orbital, well, it has a dumbbell shape to it. So an sp3 hybrid orbital looks a little bit like this. Now, that's poorly drawn, but I hope you get the picture. And how many orbitals are there like that? One, two, three, four. So we've taken one s orbital, three p orbitals, and made four sp3 hybrid orbitals. Okay, so now we can go back and we can say, when we combine all these orbitals, we're going to take this electron from our 2s orbital and bump it up to this 2p orbital. So now when we redraw our electron distribution in our orbital diagram for carbon, it looks a little bit like this. Now we have four spots that are unpaired or unshared, uh, sorry, unpaired. And what does this orbital look like? Well, it looks like it has partial s character and partial p character. What is hydrogen looking for? Hydrogen is looking for an orbital that has s character, or at least partial s character. So now what we have is a total of four orbitals where well, our hydrogens can come and bind. So I'm going to use this um, purplish blue uh, ink to draw my new electrons from each of my four hydrogens. So that's how they're able to pair up like that. Now, if you give me a second, I'm going to erase some stuff and I'm going to redraw what this kind of looks like. Okay, and there we go. So first I'm going to draw my four sp3 hybrid orbitals. There's one. There's a second. Oh, that's not very good. There's a third. And there's my four. So there are my four sp3 hybrid orbitals. Each one of these, prior to uh, sharing it with our hydrogen, each one of these lobes right here that looks a little bit like a combination of an S and a P orbital, they have one unshared electron. Now, when it comes to our hydrogens, all of our hydrogens, they only have an electron in an S orbital, boom, there's one hydrogen. There's our next hydrogen. Oh, there's our next hydrogen. And there's our next hydrogen. So there is our molecule of CH4. So the hybridization, what we are doing is we're hybridizing the orbitals with respect to carbon. So one of the things that you always want to recognize is that this is res with respect to a specific um, atom. So carbon is sp3 hybridized. Okay, I hope that helps. Now we're going to go on to a little bit more complicated of a situation because whenever we draw this C2H4, well, let's go ahead and draw it all together. Carbon, each carbon atom is bringing four electrons. So that gives us eight electrons when we talk when we count for both of our carbons. Eight, the hydrogen, there's four electrons. So we've got a total of 12 electrons to draw. So eight plus four equals 12 electrons. Okay, so C, C, then what do we have? That's two electrons. Let's put, let's just try to make it a symmetrical molecule. H, H, H. H. So that's two, four, six, eight, ten electrons. There's our twelve electrons. 
carbon, each carbon has a satisfied octet, and all of our hydrogens are content as well. Now, this organization of all of these atoms, one of the things that, I don't know if it makes it more complicated or a little bit easier, um, but we have to think about all well, our hybridization with respect to one of our carbons. It doesn't matter which one because this is a symmetrical molecule, they're basically both going to be the exact same. But our carbon starts out the exact same thing. We've got an orbital diagram that looks like such. We've got um, electron up, electron down, electron up, electron up. Okay. So what we have to do though is we have to combine some orbitals so that we have another chance for two two instances, two s orbitals. To bind. Okay, so we have to do the same thing. We have to merge our s and our p orbitals, but then we'll have to think about what's taking place here. Okay, so this one carbon, what we've got is I'm going to draw an orbital diagram like such, and I'm just going to do this. Make it a little bit different. I'm going to elevate and push an electron to each one of these individual spaces. So here's my carbon. Now, this spot right here, this spot right here, and this spot right here, they all, well, are a combination of one s orbital and two p orbitals. One of these is going to be used by hydrogen. Another one of them is going to be used by hydrogen. And so that accounts for, well, my two hydrogen bonds. The third one, though, that's going to be used by one of my carbons, or my other carbon, I'm sorry. Now, what that means is this last spot over here, that's going to be used by a carbon as well. So what we have is this is a C-C bond. Each of these are CH bonds. We have two CH bonds, so that's accounted for. We have a double CC bond, but then this other rascal out here kind of presents a new thing. So we have our fourth bond, because carbon's going to have to have four bonds. Well, we've got one CC bond that results from a hybridization of one S and two P's. Okay, so these orbitals right here are referred to as SP2 hybrid. This orbital out here, well, we're talking about making a car another carbon-carbon bond. Carbon has electrons in the P orbital. Sorry, this carbon over here, the one that I just indicated, has electrons in the p orbital. It also has electrons in the s orbital. But to form a carbon-carbon bond, you don't have to move. You don't have to change anything. Anything about that orbital. Okay, so you don't have to hybridize it. So we have three hybridized orbitals. non-hybridized. So one is a p orbital plus a p orbital on adjacent carbons, and the other three orbitals are, well, sp2 hybridized orbitals. So they're 33 percent s and 66 percent p character. Okay, so you can see how this is uh, a little bit complicated, but ultimately this is going to be helpful for distinguishing between uh, sigma and pi bonds, which is what we're going to do after we look at our last model. Okay, our last model here is C2H2. So C2H2 has a kind of simple uh, structure. This is an example of a linear molecule. We've got a triple bond between our two carbon atoms. What we have to do is have an s orbital electron of 
hydrogen um, be shared with an s orbital of carbon and that's only going to be done by hybridizing orbitals so our original view of an orbital orbital diagram was this for carbon oopsie that's a little bit of a a typo there or a righto I guess it would be called maybe it's not called that that's what I'm going to call it though up up we have to get this orbital right here to have partial s or partial um, p character but also partial s and we have to get this this electron by itself so we again have to elevate this electron over here so we get rid of this one but the good thing about this is all that we're going to do is we're going to hybridize two orbitals this s and one p so we'll have two hybrids and two non-hybrids okay so now this these orbitals look a little bit like an s orbital so that this carbon can form that carbon hydrogen bond okay so this keep in mind this is only the hybridization about this carbon the other carbon is going to kind of uh, see the same fate but it will be a little bit or yeah it will be the basically the exact same so this one right here as a result this sp hybrid orbital is for the carbon hydrogen bond this one right here is for the carbon carbon bond okay so that leaves us with two other orbitals specifically two other p orbitals for this carbon on the left hand side well it's got an unshared electron as does this one okay well what do we know about our other carbon in this instance it's identical it's got the same thing so what that means it is both carbons here end up with these end up with two um, non-hybridized p orbitals And each of these p orbitals has an unshared electron so that opens the door to form our other two well basically our second and our third bonds for the triple bond for carbon so i'm going to draw some arrows so this unhybridized orbital you can count as that bond and then this one is that bond so that means our linkage between our carbon 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 bond our carbon carbon cc 3x bond is an sp hybrid orbital with another sp hybrid orbital but then we have two additional bonds and these are adjacent p orbitals that are getting shared so we have a p to a p for a second bond and then another p orbital to another p orbital for our third bond so this is our breakdown of our carbon carbon triple bond so this sp these two sp hybrid orbitals well that's going to be our first bond and that can also be referred to as your sigma bond then your second bond is a p to p orbital or yeah our p to p and that's a pi bond and then our third bond is also a p to p orbital 
unhybridized orbital, and that's also a pi bond. So in this case, when we talk about a triple bond, your first layer, I guess, is an sp orbital with an sp orbital. That's a sigma bond. Our second bond is a p bond to a p bond, or a p orbital to a p orbital. That makes up our first pi bond. And then our third bond is another p orbital, a p orbital making our uh, third total bond and our second pi bond. So when you talk about a triple bond like this, we've got we've got one sigma and two pi. So if you think back to any time that we had a, um, a, a double bond, I'm sorry, well, you have a little bit of the same composition. You have a sigma bond um, between your two carbon atoms, as we saw in the previous example. Um, and that was an sp2 hybrid orbital with an sp2 hybrid orbital. Then we had our adjacent p orbitals which make up our pi bonds. So if you see a triple bond, what you have is one sigma bond and two pi bonds. If you see a double bond, you have one sigma bond and one pi bond. If you see a single bond, you have only a sigma bond. All right, well, I hope this was helpful. Um, and work through some of the practice problems here. And if you want to go ahead and take a look at some of the other um, I don't know, permutations in different molecules, I think that's probably a good idea to try to hybridize those orbitals and see what you actually come up with. Um, all right, well, I hope this is helpful. Have a good one.